Hello everyone and welcome to another video of, ra of Rants and Yarn with Two Best Friends. Yes, it's only me again. Um, and it's happy Saturday night everyone. I hope you guys all had a wonderful Saturday. Um, I did. It was nice weather. Enjoying my time at a housewarming party. Um, yeah. And it's been a pretty normal week. Pretty normal week for me. And I hope you guys had a good weekend. Had a good week and are enjoying a wonderful weekend. And for the art for the news I have for you today, it's in Asia. It takes place in Asia, specifically in Indonesia. And in my opinion, if you create a law, don't assume that you're under that law because you created it and you're exempt from the punishment of that law and whatever it entails, you know? Because even if you, you're the one that created the law, you still have to abide by it and abide by it and follow it. He helped write Indonesia's strict adultery laws. Then he had an affair and was publicly flogged 28 times. Of course! He's just... Just because he has a high position doesn't mean he's exempt from the repercussions of his actions. Mukilis bin Muhammad was publicly flogged October 31st. The one he literally had an affair with was canned 23 times. Well, because it's a, it's they both committed adultery. Period. It's just you have to suffer what you suffer because not every country has an adultery has an adultery law that is extreme or one one at all per se like here in the US they probably don't care about they probably don't even care about that unless you unless the husband or the wife prosecutes police found Mokilis bin Mohammed one night this September in a car parked by a beach the 46 year old was with a woman she was not his wife. See, you did it someplace where police can find you. I mean, if you did it somewhere where the police can't find you, like in the confines of your own home, then nobody would ever know. If nobody saw, then nobody would know. I mean, you would think, oh, well I made the rule, I can give the exemption that it's not going to apply to me. Um, nah, I doubt that's how it works. For most men around the world, this would not be making headlines. Oh, of course, because who cares? It happens all the time in America and other parts of the world, but nobody really talks about it because random people, who cares? But Mokhilis is an Islamic religious scholar and leader in a very conservative Aset province of Indonesia, the world's largest Muslim majority country. Aset is the only part of the Southeast Asian na nation where an extremely strict form of religious law has been applied for more than a decade. This includes public floggings for adulterers. Okay, well, that tells you everything. He's an Islamic religious scholar and leader. He's the one that made the law. And it's a very Muslim-based region. I mean, you would think that, oh, I can't do this here because of that reason. I mean, you you should know that beforehand, especially being a religious leader and 
creating these laws that everybody has to ab abide by, you know. And it doesn't matter what the punishment is. If even if it's really as bad as flogging, it's still, you know, when you're in that kind of region, you won't do certain things that can cause you to get into trouble. And look here, this is part of the Aset Ulema Council, MPU, the religious body that advises the local government and helps to write its anti-adultery law, along with others like it that ban gambling and same-sex relations. Oh, well, you know, he's part of this council that writes these rules, so he should be abiding by the laws that he writes. Gambling, same-sex relations, and adultery. He has read the anti-adultery law, so, you know, he was contradicting himself, you know. This is God's law. Husseini Wahab, Deputy Mayor of the District where Mukilis lives, told BBC News, anyone must be flogged if proven guilty, even if he is a member of the MPU. Yeah, members of MPU shouldn't be, uh, shouldn't be under the law. They have to face the same fate as everyone else who commits adultery. They're not exempt from any of the laws that they write. So Mokilis was flogged, was flogged. On October 31st, was publicly flogged 28 times. The woman he allegedly had an affair with was caned 23 times. So, of course. They both got the punishment because whether she's married or not, she still has to pay the price for having relations with a married with a married man, and of course, obviously, it's a little bit less for the woman and a lot more for the man. Well, because he was the one that was married, so he she he, he knew better than that, you know. Husseini told the BBC that Mokilis would also be kicked off the council. Oh, well, obviously you can't keep your job if you don't hear by your own rules that you commit, that you put into place. Human rights groups have previously called for the repeal of a sex public floggings and cannings. Of course, human rights people are going to say, are going to say that this is not right what you're doing and how you punish people and that it should be left left up to God or stuff like that. But I mean, if it was me, I'd say, why repeal it? He deserves the same punishment everyone else would get for that. And if you think that adultery is bad, if you don't think adultery is bad, then don't live in that area. Go somewhere else where they don't care. But like back in the 18th, 17th, 16th century, 15th century, they had the same thing. If you read the book, The Scarlet Letter, that woman was an adulteress and she had a big red letter A that she had to wear every day when she went out in public. And then everyone knew she committed adultery. That was the, her punishment. She wasn't flogged or hurt, but that was public humiliation enough to for people to see because adultery is not adultery is just not looked looked upon as a thing that's right i mean of course every society is going to shun it it's just there are some who will make a big deal and spectacle about it and some other people who just leave it behind closed doors in other Muslim-majority countries such as Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, Iran, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Brunei, and Somalia, adultery is also criminalized. 
Saudi Arabia can be punished by death. Of course, because those are areas that are 100% Muslim and 100% like cover up yourself type countries as well. And there's a choice of just wearing a hijab or covering yourself up in all, in all black, depending on your religion and what is, what the rules are within your family. And yeah, once you're married, you're married to your husband and you can't go against him or have relations with someone else aside from him, you know. It's frowned upon and of course, really strict places punish you for that, you know. And put you out in the open. India only removed its anti-adultery law in 2018. South Korea struck down a law in 2015 that criminalized adultery up to two years in jail. Yeah, I mean, some countries are becoming more lenient, or some countries still have punishment, but you just in jail for two years, no big deal. But some places they just remove it and they don't want to deal with it anymore. Because, in my opinion, there's bigger and worse crimes that have to be dealt with. And these are just menial ones, but nonetheless, I guess, important in some parts of the world. In some parts of the world. And in India, they had, like, arranged marriage and stuff like that. But with arranged marriage also, will always come for sure adultery because in my opinion in my opinion you didn't choose the wife you had you may not like her for some reason because she's ugly or she can't keep the house properly or whatever or she can't perform and of course you're going to find a side person or you're going to go and see with your block where nobody knows and do what you do 21 states in the United States still have laws making adultery a criminal offense, so they are rarely enforced or don't carry heavy sentences. Yeah, in the United States, we don't hear about it as much nowadays, but still, some places, and I bet you, places like where they have the Church of Latter-day Saints, Mormon, where they have Mormonism, and where they have all those other strict religions, yeah, that's where they're going to prosecute the most, but it's mostly the religious sects that do the prosecution, that do the prosecution themselves of their members, then involving the, involving the police of that area, and involving the police of, and Jehovah's Witness too. They have all their own strict laws for dealing with these, and they don't involve the local police, they just do their own punishment within their church and that's sufficient enough for them. So you see we have all these different things that are in the world that we don't think about that are serious issues that happen and we're just happy to we all should be happy to live where we live where we don't have to face these things but if you live in a country where you have to face these things just be mindful of it and don't do what you know you shouldn't shouldn't be doing and with that i thank you everyone please subscribe like and check out the other links i have down below and check out my also check out my website my shopping with danielle and erin on facebook and Maybe you'll find something to buy for the holidays for for yourself. Mostly geared towards women, though. Have a nice day, everyone, and I'm out. Good night.